Okay, so uh, today we are going to see uh, the rocket equation and a definition of fundamental rocket parameters. So some uh, common uh, rocket uh, parameters, which are uh, most of the time usual in, in the case of discussion of rocket uh, design. So in our last class, uh, we have tried to classify rockets based on their uh, chemical uh, composition means not composition, but based on their propellant. Okay, so uh, rockets are classified uh, into solid, liquid, and hybrid rockets based on the uh, propellant used in the rocket. And we try to identify what is the advantage of solid rocket, what is the disadvantage of solid rocket, what is advantage of using hybrid rocket that using solid fuel and liquid uh, liquid oxidizer. And then in the case of liquid, uh, liquid rocket, uh, we have various types of chemicals which we use for that purpose. And their uh, constructional future, especially we give emphasize for the solid rocket condition. So the structural component of solid rocket, like um, the casing, like the igniter, the liners or uh, uh, heat protective layers, the propellant type, and so on. So we try to see those things. Uh, so now we are going to uh, have a new chapter or new topic, uh, which is some definition of fundamental rocket parameters. So let's see those. So at the end of this lecture, uh, you will be able to know uh, drive. Uh, you will be able to drive the rocket equation uh, based on the Newton's uh, law of motion. And uh, this rocket equation is known as the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation. Okay, and then the definition of fundamental terms used in rocket propulsion, uh, the basic relation of propulsive forces, exhaust velocity and the efficiency is related to creating an, uh, and covering energy and comparison of various pro uh, propulsion systems. So this is the basic. Uh... So let's start from the derivation of uh, uh, rocket equation. So this derivation of rocket equation is uh, dependent on the uh, Newton law of motion. So those three laws of no Newton laws which are uh, applicable here, especially the uh, action and reaction law uh, tells us that the momentum of the uh, propulsive unit produces the forward motion that is known as thrust. So that is called uh, uh, one of the, and the acceleration force represented in uh, Newton's law, and especially Newton's second law, okay, that force is equal to change in momentum. So that change in momentum is produced due to the uh, ejected mass flow rate and the exist, exit velocity of the uh, object. So uh, all the uh, Newton laws works uh, together here. The action and reaction law is there. The acceleration force law is there. So that the inertia law is there. So all three laws works uh, here in the derivation of uh, Tsiolkovsky um, rocket equation. So how we can drive the rocket equation? We have one equation that is uh, momentum equation here. Okay, thrust forces which is equals to d over dt. Uh, d mv over dt is the thrust equation. So uh, the one which um, changing with time. That means negatively changing. It means this mass of propellant is consumed from time to time. So the, the flow rate, the mass flow rate is considered m dot. And the v is exit velocity, so that is the momentum. So that is the thrust equation of the rocket. Okay. So uh, based on this thrust equation, let's go to the derivation of uh, 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 equation. You see, this is the amount of mass which is constantly consumable mass. So uh, that is the case. So let's see this, assume that this is a simple rocket construction. 
So at the very beginning, initial time, that means at time T0, before ignition starts in the rocket chamber, uh, the total mass is considered as mass of rocket plus mass of fuel. Okay, so uh, MR is mass of rocket and uh, MF is the mass of the fuel. So initially we have MR plus MF and then the entire system is moving at a velocity of V at the very beginning with respect to an observer on the Earth. So there is one observer. This is an observer on the Earth. This is the initial condition of the rocket. So we are looking rocket from uh, at the moment it is in, uh, starting to move. So after some moment, delta M, that is the amount of mass ejected from the rocket. That means continuously reducing mass. So this delta M is there. That is fuel M mass. And M is the total mass actually in this case. Okay, MR is the rocket mass. Then after some times, uh, some amount of the uh, mass is consumed so that uh, we consider the initial momentum, the initial momentum MV, mass times velocity. Momentum means mass times velocity, uh, which is equals to MR plus delta MF. Okay, delta MF is the amount of mass, uh, mass of the fuel consumed, okay, times velocity. So let's take this as one uh, equation number one. And then after time T is equals to T, that means this condition, the second condition. So we consider the second condition as a final condition and the first condition as initial condition. So the subscripts I and F are used here. So this time, the uh, total final momentum of the rocket is equal to the mass of rocket, the remaining mass of rocket. That means after consuming some amount of mass times rocket's velocity here, in this case, there is some change in velocity. We have left mass of rocket, but there is change in velocity also there because of uh, the uh, uh, loosening of mass. So there is mass conservation is also there. Momentum conservation, mass conservation, energy conservation all works together. So uh, which is equals to MR times V plus delta V plus delta MF VE. Delta MF is the amount of mass of the uh, fuel consumed. So let's take that as second uh, uh, equation. And then from the, uh, uh, since there is no external force acting on the rocket, the net force is zero. That means momentum is conserved now. This is called the total change in momentum from time to zero to t is equals to t will be zero. That means momentum conservation. From the principle of momentum conservation, we have uh, p f minus p i is equals to zero. From that, finally, we can get after uh, rearranging and after reducing the equation to some form, you can find equation number three, which is MR, mass of rocket times delta V, plus mass of uh, delta MF times V exit, this is exit velocity, minus delta MF times V, which is equals to zero. So here we, have, we can see V and the V exit, two velocity. So VE and the VR, the velocity of exit, VE is the velocity of exit, and the V uh, with no subscript or superscript is the rocket velocity. That means the forward velocity. Exit velocity in the opposite direction, the forward velocity is the velocity of the rocket. So which is with respect to an observer on the Earth. That observer is looking the uh, the change in velocity of the um, rocket due to some conservation of mass. Okay, so the relative velocity of the exist with respect to the rocket is given as u. Simply u is equals to v minus ve. V is the rocket velocity. Ve is the exist exit velocity. So the relative velocity in between the two is uh, v minus ve for the observer who is looking the rocket at the launch uh, place. 
So from that, finally, what we can get is exit velocity is equal to V minus U. This U is a relative velocity. It is, it is a relative velocity. So we have four equation here. And thus, substituting four and three in, uh, we have three, equation number three here, equation number four is here. So just substituting this equation into third equation, what we can get is MR delta V plus delta MF, the whole times V minus U minus delta MF V, which is equal to zero. And then after rearranging and uh, uh, solving what we can get is MR delta V minus delta MF U is equal to zero. This is the fifth equation. Now, the uh, delta MF results in decrease in the total mass. Delta MF means it is just the mass flow rate because from every moment there is mass flow rate. The amount of propellant is consuming. So MF, uh, delta MF results in a decrease in total mass of the rocket system. And then further considering an infinitesimal, very small uh, differential element, DT, the differential time for very uh, small limiting time, uh, we have delta V, which is dV in the differential form. So delta V is equals to dV. Okay. So MR dV plus U, uh, because uh, in our uh, this equation, MR delta V, rather than delta V, we can call it as dV. And U. M, uh, D, M, F. So we can substitute it with this kind of expression. Okay, M, R, D, V plus U, D, M, M F, which is equal to zero. Then uh, after performing some uh, mathematical uh, relation, finally we can get D, V is equal to minus of U, D, M, F over M, R. Okay. Still, what you must understand is M, F is the fuel mass. MR is the rocket mass. The rocket mass means the total fuel mass plus uh, initial uh, uh, payload mass. Okay. So now integrating this uh, question number seven with respect to uh, uh, over small interval time dt from initial state to initial state uh, and uh, having dx over x is equal to ln x, you know, in our mathematics. Uh, dx over x, integral of dx over x is, is equal to ln x. So based on this fact, uh, dv for v initial to v final, this is velocity change actually, which is equal to minus u times uh, integral of mi to mf, uh, dmf over mr. So just co consider uh, this mr is the mass of uh, rocket so um, dmf is mass of fuel so just taking this mass as simply m because uh, what the changing is the fuel mass or the propellant mass okay so this gives you change in f v final minus v initial and we have minus u is here so ln of it is we can get uh, ln m for this, for the integral from mi to mf. So uh, ln of mf minus ln of mi. And this ln representation can be uh, like this. Ln of mf minus ln of mi means ln of mf over mi only in one equation. So we can remove this minus by inverting M, mi upward and mi down. So change in V, V final minus V initial, change in V is equal to U ln of Mi over Mf. So Mi means the initial mass of the rocket. Initial mass of the rocket is the, ro the, the mass of pilot, the mass of structure, the mass of propellant, and other things. Okay? It is a combination of all these things. But the final mass is the mass of rocket after consuming all the propellant. Okay, if all the propellant mass is um, uh, disregarded, then it is mass of 
uh, uh, final. MF here is final mass, MI here is initial mass. So this equation is called the rocket equation or another name, Tsiltkovsky rocket equation. And this equation is derived by the Russian scientist or uh, a person who have good rocket knowledge in the, at the very beginning in 1903. So this person developed this equation in 1903. And uh, most rockets are launched after 1950s. So after 50 years, people used his equation for uh, rocket application. So this is called Tsiolkovsky rocket equation. And this equation number eight is, it doesn't consider the gravitational effect. It is without gravitational effect. So once we consider the gravitational effect, uh, gravity will affect the forward change in velocity by negative because it is reducing, because it is pulling down. So that uh, the, when we consider the gravitational effect, it becomes change in V is equal to U ln of Mi over Mf minus G delta T. So this G, G delta T, G is the uh, G node, that is the uh, sea level gravity or gravity at the center of the Earth. So uh, this U is uh, another expression for U is, it is G naught times ISP. Okay, this U, uh, uh, you can represent it like this. Uh, U is equal to G times uh, means ISP. What is ISP? We'll discuss it today. Specific, the specific impulse, ISP times G naught. G naught, not indicates that the sea level gravity or uh, gravity at uh, standard uh, atmosphere. Means there is gravity variation as we know, as we go up and up. So because of that, uh, this G naught is 9.81. Okay. So considering that uh, delta V is equal to G naught as whole times ISP ln of M I over MF minus T. So this is by considering the gravitational effect. So if any question on this uh, derivation, hello? Hello, yes, I'm on, yes, I'm on, doctor. Yeah, I can't let you busy the rocket equation like. Any Yeah, okay. So, anyways, this U is the relative velocity that uh, uh, V minus V exit. So, uh, delta V is equal to G naught uh, the whole times ISP ln of MI over MF. Minus T. So this MF is the final velocity. MI is the initial, uh, no, initial mass. So uh, that is the meaning. Now let's go to some other definitions. So there are important terms in uh, rocket science. One is thrust. You are familiar with thrust. It is the forward force which is produced by uh, the conception of propellant. So rocket thrust is generated by momentum exchange between the exhaust and the vehicle and by the pressure imbalance at the nozzle exit. Okay, so there are two components of thrust, which are momentum thrust and the pressure thrust, as we have discussed last time. So the momentum thrust is uh, the thrust due to uh, momentum exchange, and which can be derived from uh, Newton's second law. That is, uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration uh, equation. So here, Fm is equal to the momentum thrust, which is equal to m dot delta v. So m dot delta v means ve minus v naught. So what are these ve, what are these v naught, and what is? So M Fm is thrust generated due to momentum exchange, which is in uh, Newton or in pound. m dot is the mass flow rate of the propellant. Uh, which is of the, or it is of the exhaust gas, which is in kilogram per second or in slags per second. 
V is average velocity of exhaust gas or the exit velocity, nozzle exit velocity, which is in meter per second or feet per second. And V naught is an initial velocity of the gas. Okay. So since initial velocity of the gas is considered zero, so this V naught is uh, taken zero. So Fm is equals to m dot Ve. M dot means uh, weight of propellant uh, uh, consumed per second. W dot means weight of propellant consumed per second divided by G naught. So that is M naught. Dot of P is the weight of rate of propellant in the combustion chamber. That is in kilogram per second. Okay, and G naught is the gravitational constant at the surface of the Earth, which is 9.81, or it can be 32.17 uh, for feet per second. Another pressure thrust, as we have discussed in our previous discussion, pressure thrust is equal to uh, the thrust uh, generated by pressure area term at the nozzle exit. So in most cases, pressure thrust Fp is equal to Pe minus Pa. Pe means the exit pressure, and the Pa is atmospheric pressure. The whole times Ae, that means area at exit. So we can define it like this. And the total thrust is the sum of momentum thrust and the pressure thrust. So we can represent the total thrust in equation number five here. Okay. So the first term in the uh, total thrust is the momentum thrust, which is given by the product of propellant to mass flow rate. And it is exhaust velocity relative to the vehicle. And the second terms represent the pressure thrust, which consists of product of cross-sectional area at the exit and the difference between the uh, gas pressure at the exit and the ambient fluid pressure. Okay, so this is the meaning of those, that equation. So when the exit gas pressure is less than the surrounding fluid may, uh, pressure, the pressure thrust is negative. Why? If Phi is less than Pa, we cannot get negative, negative thrust from here. And it reduces the total thrust from here. Okay, so... Because this is the uh, condition give, gives a lower thrust and is undesirable for um, the rocket condition. Okay, so PE minus PA should never be negative. Okay, that is undesirable condition. Uh, when the ambient pressure equals the exist the exhaust pressure, that means PE minus PA is equal to zero. Then it is uh, the thrust is the same as in the um, momentum thrust only. So only momentum thrust will take, because this part is zero, we have left the momentum thrust. And in the vacuum, when we uh, uh, climb up and uh, reach to vacuum of space, atmospheric pressure is zero. And the pressure thrust becomes now maximum. Why? Because this PA is zero, we have left PE times AE. So it is adding the thrust to the total thrust. Okay, so this is the maximum thrust condition. That is uh, mass flow rate times VE plus P uh, exit times area exit gives us the maximum thrust. So this is the maximum thrust. Most nozzles have their area ratio. Actually, area ratio is one of uh, uh, the parameters which we are going to discuss today. That means uh, exit area divided by throat area. It is the ratio of exit area to throat area, which is fundamental in the design of uh, 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 nozzle. So designate so that their exhaust pressure will equal to the surrounding area pressure, then PE is equal to PA. This is somewhere at or above the sea level. So this point, the point where PE is equal to PA is, uh, it is kind of fixed uh, nozzle configuration. 
at some altitude. And the location is referred to as nozzle operation at its optimum expansion ratio. Okay. At optimum expansion ratio, PE is equals to PA. This is the condition for optimum nozzle expansion. Okay. Another uh, important term is effective exhaust velocity, C. Effective exhaust velocity. In actual rocket uh, nozzle, the exhaust velocity is not uniform over the entire exit cross-section. And such velocity profile are uh, difficult to measure accurately. Therefore, uh, uniform axial velocity C is assumed for all calculations. So when we are calculating the uh, nozzle, we must consider uniform axial velocity, which is C. Okay. Then the effective exhaust velocity C is given with, uh, it is actually a product of uh, F is equal to C M dot. So C is equal to F over M dot. So uh, F, as we know, F in the, uh, F is the sum of momentum thrust plus pressure thrust so that one over M dot times uh, this parameter times, V exit plus P minus P uh, atmospheric times area exit. So which gives you V exit plus, because uh, WP dot over G dot means M dot. So M dot is canceled by M dot. We have left only VE. Yeah, here VE. And here PE over PA over M dot the times area E. So which gives us G dot ISP. This equation, C is equals to G naught times ISP. ISP means the specific impulse that we are going to see later. Since C and ISP only differ by constant G naught, so uh, either one can be used as a measure of rocket performance. We can we can use either C or either ISP to measure the rocket performance. So these are performance measuring methods. Another uh, characteristic is the characteristic velocity, C star. We call it as C star. So C star is equal to uh, PC80. PC means combustion chamber pressure. 80 means throat area. G naught means the uh, uh, sea level uh, gravitational uh, and uh, with over WP dot means the propellant weight uh, consumption per second. So which gives a PC over eight, a PC 80 uh, 